All right, folks, I'm just going to give a quick demo on how to use the online SQL editor to complete uh, module 13 slab. So you have a number of tasks here with um, required of you to query the information in the available tables that we have. OK, so we've got three tables here. We've got customers, orders and shippings. All right. We have this in online SQL interface, this is an editor. You'll see this is a comment, a comment which is indicated by this double hat line in front of it. I could also use a hash. Oh, I guess not. I could use a asterisk and a um, forward slash to bound it as well. Those are two different ways if I wanted to say have this line on multiple. Okay. Anyway, these are comments. They won't be run when you click run SQL. They're just here to explain your code. However, this right here is a, a very basic SQL query, which I could click run. And then it would show me the first name and the age of everyone in the customer's table. So I can go back in here and I can say, okay, I've got first name and I've got age. Great. So let's say I wanted to order this. Order this by age descending so that we only saw the folks oldest on top. Okay, so that's that works. So we've got folks 31 up top and 22 year old at the bottom. Okay, I could say ascending if I wanted to inverse it. Oops. Or instead, I could say order this by name. and it would change the order. Okay, so that is how you utilize this online SQL um, query editor. And what you would do is you would go through and you would test all your queries, make sure that they work. Um, so for example, we, our first one is to write a query to list all customers for the United States. Okay, so I'm gonna just select all in this case from customers. just to see where I am to start, okay? So again, I'm terminating my code line with this um, semicolon. If I don't have the semicolon, this won't run. For example, if I to delete this, I would get an error, okay? Because I don't have the appropriate break in between. Okay, I'm gonna rerun that, and you'll see that it outputs me both of my tables. Okay, so on the top, I just have my ordered by age, and on the bottom, I've got my full customer table. Okay, so, I want to list all the customers in the United States. So I'm going to say first name, last name from customers, where, country, in. Yes. Okay, and we'll see if this works. I need to make some adjustments to it. Nope, no such table as USA. Okay, so first I'm gonna properly structure this. Okay, this is error, no such table. And I think it is just that I am missing my parentheses. Let's try that again. There we go, okay. So sometimes in um, SQL, it's really just that simple. I did forget my parentheses here. Depending on what you are using in the where clause depends on how you structure it here. So I could have said where country in USA equals USA, and I believe this would run. We're going to check it. Yep, this would run. Okay. So again, the difference here is if I say in, I have to add a little bit of different syntax. Okay, they both they both get to the same place, but it's very, very minute differences with SQL. Okay, so that's how I would address the first one. And then I would go on to find the total number of orders placed by each customer, which I would use a group by function to do. Okay, so I would select, we'll say, let's look at the table again real quick, customer ID. Okay, first name, last name from 
to customers. And I'm going to just give this an alias for simplicity. I'm going to call this C. So I'm going to say as C. Okay. I'm going to tell it to, I'm going to look at the orders table. Okay. So we'll see here what we have is we have some customers that have multiple orders. Okay. So the way to address this is actually to do a right join instead of a left join because I want to join everything in the orders table to the customers table. Right, join orders as O on C.ID equals O.ID. Um, and I'm going to have to update this because it's actually customer ID. So what I'm doing here, still more, is I am telling it, hey, join on these two fields. Keep all of the records in orders that are relevant. Okay. And then I'm going to group by customer ID. Okay. I'm also going to add an aggregated column here. I'm going to say um, count. order ID. Okay. And then I am going to give it my group by conditions. Now I could spell these all out group by customer ID, first name, last name, or I could say group by one, two, three. Okay. Group by the first column, the second column called and the third column called. Okay. I'm going to click run. Oh, right and full outer joins are not full, currently supported. Okay, so I'm gonna switch things up. I'm just gonna switch where my orders table is, orders as O, and I'm gonna left join instead customers as C. So how you join things is really important. There's a whole separate lesson on that. Um, I'm not gonna go into it too much. Uh, column name, ambiguous column name. Ah. Yes, that's true, it is. Okay. It's ambiguous because both of these tables have got customer ID in it, so it doesn't know which one to show me. So I've now told it, show me the one from orders. Okay. I'm going to run my query. I'm going to go down here and check. Okay. So got my customer ID for my first customer, John Doe. He made one order. The one I'm interested in making sure worked is this guy at the bottom, John Reinhardt, because he made two orders. If I go back into my orders table, I can actually see that because I've got two customer IDs of four. Okay. So what this query did for me was it grouped and aggregated so I could see how many orders were placed by each customer. Now I could make this query look a lot better. So I'm going to do that really quickly. Um, everyone has preferences in if the comma is at the end or the beginning here. It's totally a personal preference. Um, do you? Okay. So you'll see here that this is still called count parentheses order ID. I can rename this as number orders. Okay. I rerun this really quickly. I'll see that now I've got a nice friendly heading here. Okay. So you have now, you know, you've gone through your entire assignment, you're ready to go. Well, what do you do next? You're going to copy, you're going to select all of this, right click copy or, you know, control C, whatever you want. And then you're going to move that into a code editor. Now, um, the most straightforward thing might be to just do this as a text file for me. Um, I'll log in really quickly. And I'm going to put a new file just in our folder real quick. Right. Okay, I'm just going to create a blank work document. 
and then I'm going to paste this file. Paste all of what I did. Okay, so here's a couple things. This is acceptable. You would need to make sure that you have comments in here. This is, you know, task one, for example, task two, etc. So you need your comments. Um, you also need to make sure that when I copy and paste this code and run it in my code emulator, that it still works. So that's the first piece. Okay, so this is an acceptable way to do that. Okay, make sure that you have appropriately named your file. Maybe module 13, it's really difficult to grade, you know, 12 module 13 lab assignments that don't tell me who it is. Um, assignments. Okay. All right, so you'll have your comments up top, whether you use the double hash or you, you know, use the forward slash and um, asterisk on the front end. And then again, you're going to give me a header for your table. You're going to write the query. Um, so that's the first step. The second step will be the outputs. So um, there's a number of ways to do this. I'm going to right click and say save as and just see what happens really quickly because I'm not sure what to expect. So that did not seem to work. Save as. No, I don't want a single web page complete. So um, what we're going to have to do instead is we're going to have to use screenshots. Now, if you were on a PC, uh, you've got the snipping tool you can use. All right. You start searching for the snipping tool. It'll pop open. You can click new when it does. It'll give you this little doohickey thing. And then you will just go through the process of copying take the screenshot, you'll copy from the snipping tool, and then you will paste it here. Okay, so I need to see both the query and the output. There are 10 tasks here, so that would be 10 photos, so I would just go through quickly and I'll, you know, my snipping tool is open in a different window, and I'll just go through here. You know, and really quickly do it just to demonstrate that yes, it's a you know it's a task, and also it doesn't take so long to complete. Okay, so then I would come back here, do one more. You know, you'd be doing this ten times um, because you have ten uh, pieces of query or code to write in order to successfully complete this assignment. Okay, there we go. All right. So now I've got everything in here. I've answered tasks one through 10. I've gone after the bolt, the bonus if I want to, okay? And then I've got all my queries. I've provided my comments explaining my approach for each query. And then I've demonstrated my results by putting the table here. Once you've done that, that is how you complete this assignment. All right, folks.